Hi, and welcome to The Kate Show. With me today is a very special guest, George Stover. How are you? Fine, Kate. Thanks for having me as a guest. Thanks for being here, George. So, what made you want to be an actor? Well, it's always fun to be somebody else besides myself. I like being uh, playing another character. I mean, playing a character in a movie is more comfortable for me than doing something like this where I'm myself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know? So, it was... Um, it's always, I, I enjoy being another character, and uh, oh, it was a long uh, process getting to be an actor. I, I, I grew up watching movies, mm -hmm. and um, that's what got me interested in acting. I, but I thought to myself, gee, it's kind of hard to do acting in Baltimore, so let me see what's around. And I did some plays, but um, the first play I was in was not until college, and then after graduation I did a little theater. Cool. But I always wanted to be uh, in some movies because being a movie buff, you know, I like the idea of being in a movie and it's kind of permanent. And uh, there wasn't much going on uh, filming wise in, in the early days of my interest in acting. And I figured, you know, what are the chances of me being in a movie? And then something interesting happened. I, I, I saw uh, a couple of movies that were changed my way of thinking. I saw Blood Feast and 2000 Maniacs at the drive-in. Nice. And that was my first exposure to regional filmmaking. And they were made in Florida. And I said to myself, you know, look at this movie. It was made in Florida on a shoestring budget. And uh, the acting, you know, it wasn't quite up to Hollywood standards. And I said to myself, you know, I could probably act as well as uh, most of the people in those movies. Maybe not as good as the lead, Thomas Wood, who was in, who starred in both of them, but I think I could act uh, as, as well as most of those people. And the years passed and I was in some plays at the Spotlighters and the Vagabonds. And then uh, the, only, the only person making movies in Baltimore in those days was John Waters. And uh, I, uh, got in touch with him. I was cast in Female Trouble and Desperate Living, but I also knew a fellow named Don Dohler who wanted to make movies. And uh, I got to get, I met him and we collaborated on The Alien Factor. So that started, that started me off in movies, Female Trouble and Desperate Living and The Alien Factor. Nice. So out of all the characters that you've played, which one would you like to come back and revisit? Well, there's probably a few. I always liked uh, Stephen Price, who was in uh, The Alien Factor and nice. Night Beast. Yeah. And um, considering the cult status of some of John Wooder's early movies, it would be nice if somebody hired me to uh, play Bosley Gravel again from Desperate Living and got uh, Mink Stoll to play my wife. I'd like to do that again. Even though I was killed, there might be some way to bring me back to life. Or maybe do a prequel or something. Yeah, there's always ways around those things. It's true. Now, you rarely play bad guys. And you played Nez, who was an evil cult leader, killed a bunch of people and just all around just not a good guy, in Dangerous Deception. Mm -hmm. So what was that like for you? Well, I enjoy playing villains. Usually I'm cast as uh, mild and meek types, like um, accountants or uh, scientists or... Uh, henpecked husbands or something like that. And occasionally I, I get to be an authority figure, like a deputy sheriff or, or a sheriff or something like that. But I really do enjoy playing villains. It's fun to snarl and get and be mean. I can be mean. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah we I really can. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you would never know it because you've never seen me that way in real life. But I can get that way. So it's, it's fun to play villains. That's that's great. So you like the idea of playing a character multiple times. I've heard you say yes. that in interviews before. And I um, you have gotten to do that in the series the Adventures of Luana Lee and your right. character Grandpa. So what do you like about revisiting that character? Well, I feel like I know Grandpa very, very well. I'm comfortable with him. Mm -hmm. So it's always nice to be in a role in which I feel comfortable. Of course, mathematically speaking, it's 
virtually impossible for me to be a grandfather in real life. Oh, definitely. <clears throat> well, that's it's all but, movie um, magic. It's all movie magic. So <laughs> it's nice extending myself and playing someone a little bit older than I really would be in in my actual life. I mean, yeah, as you can see, I'm much too young to be a real grandfather. Exactly. You know? Right. <clears throat> <laughs> so what is a character that you haven't yet played but you would like to give a shot well i'm not going to mention anything from the great works of literature because that's not going to happen so but I, I guess generally speaking we'll talk about a type i i would like to play a serial killer perhaps hmm. actually i'd like to play another type of role um the guy who gets the girl you know despite all the things I've acted in. I've only had two kissing scenes. And one was in my one was in Night Beast, but the girl was drunk. <laughs> and the other kissing scene was in uh Blood Massacre and the girl yeah. was a psycho. Yeah. So I'd like to be someone who gets the girl. In fact, maybe um if we do another Adventures of Luana Lee, Grandpa can find love at the senior center. That's an idea. You know, That's a pretty never good too idea. Old. Never, too, right. never too late for true love. It's mm. true. So maybe Grandpa can, you know, the old age home or something, he can, <laughs> his wheelchair will be next to another gal who's in a wheelchair <laughs> and they can fall in love or something, you know? That would be very touching, I think. Yeah, it would have been nicer to have gotten a girl earlier in my uh, career, <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's never better too, late than never. Right. It's never too late to be a leading man, right? Right. You know, that's definitely. <laughs> so, Lead All Film Productions and JBH Video, they recently made a documentary about you. Now, well, that must have been kind of weird, right? Somebody coming up well, to you and saying, I want to make a documentary about your life. Yeah, it's and... kind of surreal. You know what my first thought was? What? I thought to myself, well, shouldn't I be dead first? <laughs> oh because, you know, when I was growing up, I used to watch documentaries about... Uh, animals or travel logs or something like that and watch but and but it seems to me that the only uh documentaries i saw when i was growing up about people were about <laughs> uh deceased historical figures oh right so that's what i kind of grew up on so i'm figuring you know why would anybody want to do a documentary on me when i'm still alive you know? Well, but you've had such an impressive body of well, work. I mean, it's it, the documentary's incomplete. <laughs> It's, the whole story hasn't been told yet. <laughs> you know? I think I've still got a few more roles in me. Well, they'll have to do another documentary about Part you Part two, then. yeah. Exactly. Right. So, what was that whole experience like for you? Well, it was just plain weird. It was surreal. <laughs> I, 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 I still haven't seen it yet. But uh, it's hard to believe in it. I mean, it's flattering. Don't get me wrong. It's flattering, and uh, but it's still hard to believe, and it's kind of like in the Twilight Zone. I feel like, uh, you know, it's... I don't know if I'll be uncomfortable watching it or not. Do you usually get uncomfortable, like, when you're watching yourself, you know, in movies and all? Sometimes I do, especially yeah. the first couple times I see something, because I'll say, gee whiz, you know, I blinked too much, <laughs> or uh, I should have given a little more emphasis to that word or this word, or... I notice my um, flaws, the f things I think I did wrong. Right, yeah. And it kind of like uh, takes some of the enjoyment out of it. Now, after a few years pass, mm -hmm. I don't mind seeing myself because I, I, I'm, I just wish I was that young again. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it does make me uncomfortable a little bit watching myself, especially the first time I see myself in something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I happen to agree with you, but that, but then, like you say, like after a couple of years, you're more forgiving yeah, of yourself. Yeah, more. That's true. Yeah, like at first, mm. you're like, gosh, why did I do mm. that? You know, it's it's really easy to pick apart I know. your performance I and know. everything. Yeah, well, that's that's nice that time, you know, equals forgiveness as far as that goes. Right. So, what are you working on right now? I have uh, three upcoming projects that I know about that seem rather definite. Uh, I'm going to be in. Uh, Revenge of the Devil Bat, made by Ted Mooring in Pennsylvania. Hmm. He's actually making a sequel hmm. to uh, the Bela Lugosi uh, B-movie, The Devil Bat. Oh, that's pretty and cool. I play a sheriff in that. And I'm supposed to be in uh, Killer Camp Out, coming up soon, from Brad I'm... Twig. Oh, cool. I think he contributed to the documentary. Yeah, yeah, he's in it. Yeah. And uh, I'm supposed to have a cameo in uh, Manos Returns. 
-hmm. which is a sequel to uh, Manos, The Hands of Fate. Huh. And uh, that was a, a cult classic, you might say, from the early 60s. And it was given a, a little a new life on uh, Mystery Science Fiction 3000. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. And uh, they raised uh, money to make a, an official sequel with... Uh, I believe three of the original cast members. Wow, that sounds exciting. So those are uh, projects I should be in soon. And then uh, a previous movie I was in, Four Milfs vs. Zombies, is coming out in July <laughs> on DVD. Cool. And I play the president of the United States in that Wow. One, you know, which is kind of uh, a stretch. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and we used a location for that that was used in uh, Absolute Power by Clint Eastwood at the Baltimore County Courthouse. Wow, that's yeah, really cool. Yeah, the outside cool. of it. That's, that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, we shot it on a Sunday afternoon, and very quickly, so no security <laughs> guards could come and chase us away. <laughs> and then I have a few movies uh, in the can, which uh, should, I hope to be uh, seeing a release on them eventually. A Crawler. Right. From Don Dollar and Joe Ripple. And Stellar Quasar and the Scrolls of the Dahlia from uh, right. Seuss Vela. Yeah. And that's a um, outer space epic. Yeah, right. And the, the interesting thing about that is she got uh, Veronica Carlson and Caroline Monroe to do cameos. Oh, wow. That's really cool. I know. Because they ne never even worked together at Hammer Films in England. I didn't realize no, that. No, I mean, they were in movies for Hammer, right. but they were never together. Huh. And, That's uh, really cool. And she had booked them for the Fanex conventions. Oh, yeah. And so they were they were really good buddies, so they graciously did a cameo at, uh, uh, shot it in a room at a chiller convention, I believe. Oh, cool. They actually did a cameo um, for her movie. That's really cool. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And then... Uh, what Happens Next Will Scare You, from Chris LaMartina and Jimmy oh, George. Oh, cool. And uh, Fiendish Fables, from Brad Twig. And Beyond the Wall of Fear, from Joe Sherlock. And uh, I was also in um, Night of the Living Dead, Genesis. Oh, right. Shot in Virginia, in which uh, Judith O'Day comes back to play Barbara, a oh, role she so created cool. in uh, the original Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. So those are all movies that I've, I've shot my scenes, and they're just finishing up uh, the rest of the movies or in post-production. So I hope to have them re released on DVD in the near future. That's really cool. Yeah. You've worked in the industry during several eras, like film, right. video, you know, and now digital. And a lot of things have improved, like how fast you can do it mm -hmm. and, and, you know, prices of equipment and, and the pictures a lot more clear than it used to be. Now, is there anything that you missed about the way that it was? See, I'm an old film guy. Mm -hmm. I grew up on film and uh, I'm used to film. I kind of hate it when old technologies kind of pass away. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I didn't even like it when uh, Kodak stopped making Kodachrome film and right. they stopped making the chemicals to process it. I mean, I didn't like that. And, you know, I read where once where uh, 35 millimeter motion picture cameras are no longer being manufactured. Mm. And uh, now movie theaters are all digital. Right. So I kind of hate, hate to see the passing of old technologies. I can't think of any advantages those days uh, had with making movies. I mean, you know, it was more expensive. Right. Editing on a moviola was uh, horrible. I don't know how Tedious. people ever did that. Right. You know, I, I kind of miss the old days, but, uh, you know, it is, uh, there's a lot of advantages to shooting on digital, including right. smaller cameras. Yes. A lot less costly, a lot easier to edit. Right. You know. Are there any subtle differences, but you know, besides those kind of things that that you've noticed? Well, I know uh, in the early days of video, you could tell the difference between the film and video. There was a film look and a video look. Mm -hmm. You know, the early days of video were like reminiscent of a soap opera, the soap right. opera look versus uh, the film look of a movie. Now, that was a that was something that was um, noticeable more in the past than it that is noticeable now, because right. now. Now feature films uh, that you see in the theaters are shot on digital, and uh, I can't really... They certainly don't have a soap opera look, so <laughs> things have improved. But I miss the old days. Right. You know, real film, you know, mine. <laughs> but I guess that's... Uh, I mean, I, Quentin Tarantino, I was amazed that he uh, shot uh, 
the Hateful Eight on 70 millimeter. Wow, I, I didn't mean, that's, realize that. You know, that's a one stop step beyond uh, 35 millimeter. Right. You know, I don't know how he found all those projectors to to show it in 70 millimeter in certain markets. Yeah, but, uh, right. He might even have to shoot digital someday. You never know. I don't know. So I know the Alien Factor, that's getting a Blu-ray release soon. Will you yeah. tell us about that? That was a movie that we made uh, a long time ago and probably 19... Uh, that's how I was just a child, of course. You, right? you know? yeah. <laughs> I was just a child when we made that one. <laughs> but uh, I played a junior scientist, <laughs> some young kid who wanted to be a scientist when he grew up, you know. <laughs> and there's a the cover over there for the new Blu-ray oh, release. Oh, cool. Here, let's take a look at that. Uh, I... Uh, did a lot of the behind the scenes stuff for this Blu-ray release. I produced oh, yeah? three of the short subjects that are on it. Oh, cool. And I also edited the audio commentary. Oh, wow, that's neat. And I had to round up previous cast and crew members and get them to contribute because I, uh, see when that movie was out before on DVD, mm -hmm. it was uh, released on a double bill with Fiend. And I did the audio commentary all by myself. Oh, wow. So this time I said, well, what am I gonna talk about? that I didn't talk about before, mm -hmm. except, you know, who had, who's no longer with us or maybe a few things I've forgotten. But I decided to uh, round up cast and crew members from the past, and I got about 14, uh, I think, 14 other voices. So there's That's probably great. a total of 15 voices on this audio commentary. Wow. And it was a lot of work because I had to get the audio from different people, and I laid it out on the timeline. And it was like an audio jigsaw puzzle. I laid it out on the timeline because they, for the most part, they just talked about their scenes. Right, right. Had a couple of people who talked about other scenes in the movie, mm -hmm. but most people limited what they were saying to the scenes they were in or worked on. So I laid that out on the timeline. And uh, I mean, it was really tough because sometimes I had to cut out spaces between words. Oh, yeah, In right. order to make it fit in the scene because they, they ran over and I had to, you know, somebody else started talking on the, in the next scene. So I had to trim down their scene by cutting out uh, pauses in their, between, uh, in, their, in their speaking. It was very difficult. And then, um, but I laid down the tracks for what everybody else had to say. And then I, uh, whatever was left is what I said. Oh, cool. So I had to write stuff. I couldn't just wing it. I had right. to write stuff to fit in in a lot of time slots that was left over to me, and it was it was quite an ordeal. Then I had technical problems with that, but you know, I got it done. Only to find out that the synchronization rate between an, uh, the older versions and, and Blu-ray is not the same. Oh my! So I think Fred Olin Ray had to um, take snippets of the sound and lay it on the Blu-ray timeline because mm -hmm. I think the frames per second is different. I don't, oh, I, don't, yeah. I don't quite understand it, but uh, it was hard to keep it in sync. So he probably had to re-edit what I did. And, um, and then I also worked on some short subjects. Cool. Yeah, we have a cast reunion, which uses uh, footage from uh, an old Fanex convention of um, several cast and crew members on stage talking about the movie. And uh, I have that. And I did an introduction for um, the opening and closing. but. Mm -hmm. And then Steve Foley did in, in Tallahassee, Florida, did my final editing and put he put titles on it. And then we have that, and we have a behind the scenes short subject, which just has me showing um, artwork and props and clothing. Oh, cool! And then we have something called uh, the Television Years, which mm -hmm. has uh, clips from TV shows and clips from uh, not only when it was uh, being promoted, but also have bumpers from local TV broadcasts, which are kind of entertaining. Oh, that's neat. And then then there's the Meet the Cast and Crew mm -hmm. uh, short subject, in which I rounded up, uh, oh gosh, about 16 cast and crew members. Wow. And got them to send me footage, or else they came over to my house and I shot footage. And um, in a couple of cases, I went to their houses and uh, shot footage of them talking about uh, the movie. It ended up lasting about two and a half hours, which was too long, so it's been trimmed down a little bit for the DVD. But it was uh, it was interesting. It was a challenge because I was doing all this photography by myself. Right. And so I did some of the uh, introductions to those uh, short subjects in my yard, and I didn't have anybody helping me. So, like, I'd set the camera rolling. I had a potted plant mm -hmm. as my stand-in <laughs> 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 to get it centered. And focused, and you know, 
in a few of the shots, it looks like this plant is growing out of my <laughs> spinal cord or something. So <laughs> maybe that'll be your next movie. I don't know. It's kind of weird. I'm doing all this stuff, and it's I'm wearing a coat and tie, and I'm, it's in the summer, and I'm sweating, and I'm doing multiple takes because uh, I'm the only one pushing the button on right, the camera. Right. Right. And I've got this damn plant behind me. <laughs> stealing the show from me <laughs> and it's, i don't know i, I could have i wished i could have focused more on uh one thing instead of being a jack of all trades right but i got it done and uh hopefully it's not too bad and um we'll see i, I i'm sure it's wonderful yeah i don't know when it's coming out but uh it'll come out in the next maybe by the end of june i think that's cool. the latest we'll see that's awesome so it'll be on amazon Amazon.com. So if anybody wants to uh, pre-order, no, it won't be available for pre-order. It'll, it'll be there when it's when it's done. So oh, okay. if, um, if anybody wants to order it, Amazon.com is the place. That's the place to go. Is there anything else you want to tell us, George? Mm, can't think of anything except don't forget to go out and vote this November. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to do it for us this week. Thanks for tuning in, and I want you to tune in and turn on every Tuesday right here on The Kate Show. Please like and subscribe. Leave us a comment if you feel like it. We'll see you next week.